Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on egg freezing. My name is Dr. Alex Polyakov, and I am a fertility specialist working with Melbourne IVF. I've been in practice for about 10 years, and some of my special interests are laparoscopic surgery and fertility preservation. I also do quite a bit of research in, in various aspects of fertility and statistical analysis. And today we are going to talk about elective egg freezing. I'd like to go through the history a little bit of, of that particular technique. Uh, it's not very old. It's been around for about 10 years, 10, 15 years. And initially it was used for fertility preservation in women who had newly diagnosed cancer. And when we started doing elective egg freezing, it was restricted to people who were likely to be losing their ovarian reserve and their eggs due to chemotherapy. And so one of the techniques that was developed quite a long time ago was collecting eggs before they start chemotherapy and then freezing them. And then the idea was at the time that when they complete their chemotherapy and they're in remission and they're all well and everything's fine, if their ovaries are damaged due to the effect of chemotherapy, uh, they could use those frozen eggs to still have their own genetic children. And it took quite a long time to develop a technique to freeze eggs effectively. Human egg is very difficult to freeze. It's one of the largest cells in the human body and it's full of water. And when you freeze water, as you know, it expands. And so one of the problems was that when you try to freeze eggs, they simply exploded. So there were techniques developed to prevent that from happening. And eventually a new method was developed called vitrification, where eggs are very rapidly frozen. So those crystals, those water crystals, didn't have a chance to develop and damage an egg. And that was really a game changer because before vitrification was introduced, uh, the success rate was, was quite low. Uh, but with vitrification, we get a very good survival. Uh, up to 95% of eggs would actually survive. And in some centers, the birth rate from frozen eggs is the same at the moment as it is with fresh eggs. And for that reason, the American Society of Reproductive Medicine a few years ago designated egg freezing as a, an accepted technique to use not just for fertility preservation in cases of cancer, but also for fertility preservation to try to delay having children. And in the last two or three years, that has become quite a popular thing to do. A lot of women uh, who may not have a partner or who may not want to have a child right now would freeze their eggs to be used in the future. And there are a number of sort of issues associated with that. And one of the main ones, one of the main criticisms that we, we often encounter is that in actual fact, very few people come back to use their eggs because most women find a partner or decide not to have children or for some other reason. So at the moment, we think that those who do freeze their eggs would probably, most of them would probably not come back to use them. And in our experience, about 10 to 20% of women, we expect to come back and for those eggs to be used. Now, one of the main issues with egg freezing that, that, that often 
is discussed is at what age it would be appropriate to make that decision to freeze eggs. And I suppose if you do it too early, if, if someone decides to do it in their early 20s, chances are small that they will actually need to use them because eventually you they would find a partner or decide to have a baby by themselves. Uh, but very few of those women would come back to use those eggs. On the other hand, if you decide to do it too late, let's say after the age of 40, obviously the quality of eggs are is, is not as good and therefore <clears throat> at the age of 40 it's probably not a good idea to freeze your eggs because the chances are quite slim that they would be useful and they would produce the baby that, that you want in years to come. Uh, one of the questions that I got is what are the chances of having a baby with a frozen egg? Overall the statistics are that every egg that is frozen has about 5% chance, give or take, of producing a baby. Uh, it does depend a lot on at what age the eggs are frozen. So for example, if eggs are frozen before the age of 30, the chances are higher. If they're frozen after the age of 37, the chances are lower. But overall, we quote overall chance at about 5% per egg, which implies that if you want to have a realistic chance of having a baby from, from frozen eggs, the recommendation that most clinicians would provide is that to have a good chance, you need about 15 to 20 eggs to be frozen. And for some women, that's just not possible from one cycle. I mean, if someone is young and their ovarian reserve is good, you would have a good chance of achieving that number in just one cycle. On the other hand, for all the women or for women who have decreased ovarian reserve, the chance of producing that many eggs in one cycle may be smaller. And therefore, if you decide to, to explore this possibility, when you have your consultation with a fertility specialist, it's important to work out what is the expected number of cycles that you need to do to achieve that magic number of 15 to 20, to have a reasonable chance of producing a baby. And we, we actually have a little calculator where I put in the age of the patient and how many eggs are frozen and it gives you the number the the number of what is the chance of actually having a live birth so that that is often quite helpful because then i can advise my patients look your ovarian reserve is good we're going to get 15 eggs from this particular cycle this is your chance of having a baby from those eggs uh, one of the question is whether to freeze eggs or embryos. That's the first question that I have here. Now, um, obviously, if you're talking about elective egg freezing, most women who come to see one of our specialists are single and they don't have a partner. So the option of freezing embryos is not an option that can be taken up by most women. Another complicating factor which we encounter sometimes, especially in the setting of fertility preservation for cancer, is that in Australia, if you freeze embryos, that is an egg and a sperm, they combine to form an embryo, you need to have consent from both the woman and the man to try to achieve pregnancy. And in some instances, obviously families break down and people get divorced and break up. And if the man says, no, you can't use those embryos, uh, the woman cannot use them. They, they get discarded. And so the recommendation is generally to try for egg freezing if you're single. And if you're married and you are having fertility preservation or egg freezing before chemotherapy 
to to make that decision with your partner to to see how you feel so generally speaking this this webinar is mostly about elective egg freezing for women who may be single and thinking about future fertility freezing embryos gives you a better idea of the success rate because obviously not all eggs that are frozen survive the thaw process and not all eggs that are thawed will actually become an embryo and so if you have embryos frozen your chances are better because well there are less of them but the chances are much better if you use embryos but in in the setting of social or elective fertility preservation the recommendation is to to probably look at egg freezing rather than embryo freezing now the second question that i got is does the amount of time the eggs are frozen affect the quality of the eggs and the answer is no because the way it works we when when embryos or eggs or sperm is frozen it is completely biologically inactive and so it doesn't really matter how long the eggs are stored for they they still have exactly the same chance of producing a baby as if they were frozen yesterday now the point of of this this whole idea of elective egg freezing is that let's say someone is 32 and they freeze their eggs and then at the age of 42 they come back and say we want to use them the chance of pregnancy depends by a large margin on the age of the woman but it's the age of the eggs that is important so the chance of pregnancy in this 42 year old woman will be the same as the chance in the 32 year old woman because the eggs were frozen at 32. i, I hope that makes sense so when you freeze eggs when you're younger your chances sort of frozen in time at that particular biological age so when you come back five seven ten years later your chances are better than if you were doing ivf at 42 rather than 32. i hope that makes sense to everyone and that's the whole idea behind elective egg freezing you sort of give yourself a chance to use eggs that are biologically younger than your chronological age the second question is what are the side effects of egg freezing <clears throat> you have to go through an ivf cycle essentially so it all starts with visiting a fertility specialist you have a lot of tests including blood tests which include hormone levels and ovarian reserve testing and then you have an ultrasound and then you have a consultation with your clinician to determine whether this is a good idea whether it's possible how many eggs we're expecting what are the chances of pregnancy with those eggs etc etc so all that gets explored before you undergo the procedure now the procedure itself is very straightforward you everything starts on day one so day one of a menstrual cycle is traditionally taken as the first day of the period so that is day one and you call melbourne ivf and you say this is my day one and they say please come in collect you in your medications and the nurses go through the medications and how to use them and so after that for about six or seven days you do injections and you know injections are really quite simple it's a dial-up pen so that's what it looks like you attach a needle on top of that and you dial there is a little dial on the side you dial the dose that you're advised to use and you self inject it's it's really quite simple the needles are really really small so it's not really very uncomfortable and you do that for a few days and then you have an appointment with a fertility specialist who will then do an ultrasound and see what the response is essentially the ultrasound is looking at how many follicles are there in the ovaries and the number of follicles roughly roughly equals the number of eggs that you're expecting to get so hopefully it will be 15 to 20 
And at this point in time, there is an opportunity to adjust the medication. So if it's too many, you might go down a little bit. If it's not enough, you might go up a little bit. And you do the adjustments on that day of the ultrasound, the first ultrasound. And then the clinician would tell you, please come back in three to four days and continue using your medications as you were. And you come back in a few days, have another ultrasound. And at that point in time, it's probably time to plan for egg collection. Now, then you get another injection that causes final maturation of eggs. And 36 hours later, you come into the hospital, you go to sleep. It's light sedation. It's not full general anesthetic. And your clinician would use ultrasound and a special needle to drain the fluid from those follicles. And in that fluid, there are little eggs floating around. And that fluid goes to the lab. And the scientists look at the fluid and fish out those eggs. And then they go to the lab and get frozen. And that's pretty much the end of the process. For, for most people, it's really quite straightforward. There are a lot of possible complications, but serious complications are quite rare. It's very unusual to be allergic to the medications because they are hormonal preparations that are the same as what you produce in your body. The main risk there are, there are two main risks for with egg freezing. One is that there is a condition called ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, and that sometimes happens when there are too many eggs. And it's it's a, it's a unusual and unique condition where you get really bloated. There is a lot of fluid in your tummy, and sometimes you end up in hospital to be treated. But that's usually it's 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 quite rare. It's not very common at all. And there are techniques and medications that we can use, especially for egg freezing, that prevent this from happening very often. So it's not very common, but it can happen. The second risk that I think is the main one is during the egg collection. What happens is that we use ultrasound and a needle to go through the vaginal wall to get to the follicles and to drain fluid from those little follicles to collect eggs. And during that process, there are risks of bleeding and infection. They're the main ones. But there is also a very, very small risk of damaging the bowel or the bladder or the blood vessels. That happens very rarely. Probably about one in a thousand procedures results in a significant complication. But generally speaking, it is quite straightforward. And on that day of the egg collection, uh, you usually find out that there is there is a problem but it's it's it, it really is quite uncommon and most people don't really have a lot of problems with with the egg collection sometimes the eggs are frozen and I suppose it's like anything in life there is a chance that they're not very good quality we can't really tell from just looking at them whether they are good quality eggs or not and so during the counseling process when you speak with your clinician it will be stressed that sometimes even though you have quite a good number of eggs when they are thought they may not survive or very few of them may survive they may not fertilize or very few of them fertilize and they may not produce good embryos and so that is, I think, the main risk of this procedure, that you do all this and you, you know, spend quite a bit of money on, on this process. And at the end of the day, you rely on it to give you a baby in years to come. And then you come back and none of the eggs survive or none of the eggs actually produce a good embryo for transfer. And that is the main risk. So I always advise my patients that even though it is like an insurance policy, there is no guarantee that doing this will actually produce a baby in the long run. So th this is the most important thing that I'd like to stress quite, quite strongly with, with my patients is that you really cannot rely 100% on your frozen eggs to produce a baby in years to come. There are patients who do very well and there are some who do quite poorly. 
And so that is the main risk, that all the effort and all the expense that you expend, unfortunately, when the time comes to try to make a baby with those frozen eggs, it may not pay off. You may still end up with, with no pregnancy. And that, that is a very important point that needs to be stressed time and time again, because people feel that, you know, I have 20 eggs frozen and it's almost guaranteed that I'll have a baby. That's not quite the case. Chances are good, but nothing is guaranteed, unfortunately, with IVF. It's like any other IVF cycle where we try our best. We try to get the best eggs. We try to get lots of them. We try to make good embryos and lots of them. But unfortunately, sometimes it works. Most of the time it works, but sometimes it doesn't for whatever reason. The storage of eggs by itself doesn't really reduce their capacity to produce a baby. And so no matter how long it is, there is still a good chance that at the end of the day, if you have a good number of eggs, you will have a baby, but there is a chance that you may not. Now, just to touch upon how long can you store your eggs. In theory, they can be stored indefinitely. So once they are frozen in liquid nitrogen, you really don't have a used by date from a biological point of view. But there are some legislative requirements that we're governed by. For example, we cannot store eggs or sperm or embryos for more than 10 years. That's just part of the law in Victoria. And after that, if you want to store for longer, there are processes that you have to go through to get special permission, etc., etc., to continue storing eggs. There is another limitation that I think everybody who is considering using frozen eggs should be aware of, and that is we, as a group of doctors, made the decision quite a while back that we would not treat women with their own eggs or donor eggs after their natural age of menopause, which is about 50. And so if you decide to have a baby, you know, when you're 55, we would not be able to help you, unfortunately. And that's just because we feel that after that age, the risks of pregnancy may be much higher. And this is something that we feel is not a good practice to, to try to get someone pregnant who is older than that age. Now, there is a question that is sort of unrelated to egg freezing, but I'll answer it anyway. What are the chances of pregnancy with the blastocyst grade 5 AA frozen embryo transfer? I think the chance is very, very good. This is the best possible grade. And if it survives intact, which 95% of those embryos would, you would have, depending on your age, age is important, you would have around possibly up to 50% chance, but it not, it's not a given. It's still a 50-50 proposition. Um, I think overall, I must say that if you are considering doing egg freezing for social reasons and not medical ones, I think you should first of all see a fertility specialist and have the tests that I mentioned. So that would involve blood tests and ultrasound and to have a frank and open discussion about what the chances are of getting a good number of eggs and what the chances are of those eggs actually producing a baby. And most of us, as I mentioned, have a calculator that would give you that information based on the previous studies that we participated in. Now, <clears throat> the question often arises as to if you don't use your eggs, what actually happens? Now, the way it works is that you pay a, an amount, I think it's about six, seven thousand dollars for the cycle to freeze your eggs. And then there is a six monthly fee that you pay for storage. And I think it's about two hundred dollars, something along those lines. 
and you get an invoice from Melbourne IVF every six months to say your eggs are still frozen, here is your invoice, please pay. Now, what happens if you, let's say, get married, have children and decide not to use those eggs? That is a common scenario. Most people still hold on to them for a while, but at some point, most people would have to make a decision what to do next. And so the options, of course, are to use them if, if that's what you want, if you can't get pregnant or you're still single or whatever. Uh, or there are actually three options available what to do with eggs that you may not want to use. And two options. One, well, three. <laughs> One is you say, I don't want to store them anymore. Please discard my eggs. And we do that. Second option is I am happy to donate them for research. And that's a very worthwhile goal because we do we, we do quite a lot of research on gametes if we have patients permission to try to improve the process or for training and that's an important part of what we actually do because we're always trying to get things to be better and for us to do that we we actually need eggs and sperm and sometimes even embryos to 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 do this this research and it's all uh, guided by our ethics committee, so it's all sort of very controlled and it's it's actually quite difficult to do projects, to get permission to do them, but some of them do get through and we feel that it's a very, very important cause that you can donate your eggs for research. The third option is, is, is quite interesting. You can actually donate your eggs. There is a possibility that, let's say, you decide that you don't want to store them anymore because you had two or three children and you don't see yourself using them in the future, you can donate to someone who needs them. And this could be someone you know, and so they would come and see one of the fertility specialists to say, my friend who has stored eggs, they, they're happy to donate. And there is a whole process with counseling and paperwork, etc., etc., where you can actually donate your eggs to someone you know or you can be really altruistic and nice and say look i have these 15 eggs i had children i am not going to use them now that i had my own children i am happy to donate them to someone anyone i, I don't really have anyone who wants them but if you do please you know we we have a waiting list it doesn't happen very often, unfortunately. We don't get a lot of egg donations, but and the waiting list is very, very long, but there are a lot of women who can't get pregnant with their own eggs for, for a number of reasons. And so we would encourage people who don't need or want to use their own eggs to donate them to someone else. And that would be obviously our preferred option because there are a lot of patients of ours who need donor eggs who can't access them in Australia it's actually quite difficult to find donor eggs and the legislation is is quite restrictive as to who can donate and how it can be done so it is very difficult in the past before the COVID epidemic a lot of people went overseas for donor eggs but at the moment that's not possible and so we have more and more patients who are really quite desperate and so if you decide to freeze your eggs and then you don't want them, I would strongly encourage you to consider that option instead of just discarding your eggs with, with no benefit to anyone. If there are any other questions, please put them up. Otherwise, I think we're going to wrap it up now. Anybody at all? Any other questions? Oh, I think I need to scroll down. Sorry, guys, <laughs> there is a scroller. I, I, I will get to them. Okay. Uh, what can I do to improve the quality before having them frozen? There are a couple of things. There aren't that many. I mean, healthy lifestyle is important. Healthy diet is important. Healthy weight is absolutely crucial. So if you're overweight, your chances of having a baby from... IVF from frozen egg is significantly less. So before you freeze eggs, 
you want to be in your optimal shape. I think that's very important. You should be taking some sort of multivitamins, pregnancy multivitamins, so something like Elevit, something like this. This, this is the most common one, but any, any, any multivitamin, pregnancy multivitamin would probably do. There are some antioxidants that some people recommend to improve the quality of eggs, such as CoQ10, it's called, and you can get it in the pharmacy. That may or may not be useful, but it's not harmful, so I would usually recommend it for two to three months before you undertake egg freezing. But I think healthy diet and healthy weight are the most important thing that you can do. And of course, you can't be smoking or drinking or using hard drugs because that definitely affects the quality of eggs. And for example, if you smoke and you freeze eggs, your chance of pregnancy later on will be reduced by a significant margin. It's the same if you're overweight or if you drink a lot or if you use recreational drugs. So healthy living for at least three months before the procedure, before you undertake the cycle, is, is very, very important. Um, just one second. Uh, yes, there are more questions. Uh, so I hope that answers your question on what you can do. Optimal weight the best possible diet, balanced diet, some multivitamins and maybe some antioxidants, that could be helpful. But that's that's pretty much it. Uh, yes, uh, some of the comments are about what to do when you dispose of the eggs. If you aren't sure what to do, that's a very good point. We have a very, very talented and brilliant counseling team. And if you are not sure what to do with your eggs when you decide to dispose them, it's, it's the best idea would be to talk to our counselors and they will advise you what the next step might be, whether you decide to dispose of them, donate them to research or donate them to someone else. Uh, they, they would go through all the options with you at the time. I think that's probably all the questions that I got. So we're going to, let me just check. I think we are going to wrap it up. Thank you everyone who tuned in. If you have any other questions, do type them now because I think it was planned for half an hour. I'm happy to stay on, but I think I've exhausted all the questions here. Uh, yeah. All right, wonderful. Thank you very much, everyone. I really appreciate you tuning in and Bye. goodbye.